Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday. It's the 28th of April, 2021. Here we are about ready to wrap up April. What we're gonna talk about today is first of all, a big warm up is coming. After some cooler wet weather in many areas, temperatures are gonna really sharply be on the rise. But there was some significant rain in some areas we need to tell you about, not much elsewhere, as we were worried when we discussed this yesterday, there were gonna be winners and losers, and that was certainly the case with the rain, but there were also some big, big winners. May is a really important month. I wanna spend a little bit of time looking at the month of May in terms of what it usually brings and how critical May is as a month that brings beneficial moisture to the Intermountain West and Western High Plains, especially for rangeland conditions, because if you don't have a wet May, you've got problems later. The next chance for precipitation is gonna come mid to late weekend and into Monday, but a drier trend until then. Now I'm gonna go and show you three different images here that show you what the radar saw when it comes to estimating the rainfall across the region with this most recent storm. Now, some of these landmarks are a little bit hard for you to see. What I'm showing you here is the Cheyenne radar. So here is Cheyenne right here. I want to show you, we talked about winners and losers. Anywhere you see these darker green colors, many areas got a, a half to three quarters of an inch of water. As you get into these yellow and darker colors here, the forecast uh, for anywhere from one to two and a half inches of rain in this area came out to be correct. Anywhere from an inch and a half to over two inches of rain fell in these red and orange areas right here in these yellow areas. Now, if you look down here at the key, it shows five or six inches of water. It wasn't that much. The radar got fooled a little bit by that rain snow mixture, but rain gauges in this region saw that Laramie County and parts of southeastern Wyoming and Albany County, northern parts of Weld and Larimer, as well as the I-80 corridor of Nebraska did really, really well with some good soaking rains. But once you got north of about Wheatland and north of Torrington, it was almost nothing. Northeastern Colorado here in the South Platte Valley did really, really well. And you can see that with the radar out of Denver. Here's I-76. So you can see along the I-76 corridor here and back into Denver, some really good rain. These are where the heavier thunderstorms were. So you had some pockets here that had over two inches of rain, in fact, two to three inches of rain underneath some of these heavier thunderstorms like this one right here. So this is great news for rangeland conditions, winter wheat country here in the South Platte Valley of Northeastern Colorado. Some good needed rain along the Front Range as well, getting down into the Palmer Divide. But if you come to take a look at the Pueblo radar, so here's Colorado Springs, and up here, as you can see, is along Interstate 70 there. Along and near the Palmer Divide, those showers and thunderstorms got into the area there, but you get south of the Palmer Divide and southeastern Colorado, which really needs the rain, as well as portions of western and southwest Kansas just got missed almost completely. And the same goes for central and northern parts of Wyoming, which didn't get nearly as much precipitation out of the system. But at least we saw some areas right here really, really see some beneficial moisture. Those areas are going to really green up here in the coming days. This is today's upper level chart. We've got the low over southern New Mexico. The system is kind of stretching and breaking off into two pieces and sliding slowly off to the south and east. And we've got a big high building in off the west coast. And this has got a lot of warm air it's going to bring with it as it heads eastward. And by Friday afternoon, the nose of the high pressure gets pushed into the region. We still have this upper level load is kind of wandering down here, not doing much. Warm air from the deserts gets brought in here and you're going to see a big warm up. These are temperatures relative to normal for Friday. Look at that from California through the Pacific Northwest into the Intermountain West. The only pocket of coolness is with that upper level low drifting down into Mexico and West Texas there. But this is a really big warm up coming. So you're going to see a significant snow melt up here in the Bighorns, up here in the mountains of southern and southwestern Montana and other mountain ranges of Colorado and Wyoming, we're gonna see a quick rise in creeks, rivers, and streams as you see those very warm temperatures spread further east into the day on Saturday. Now by Sunday, we're gonna see a trough come in. It's not terribly organized, but this time of year, these frontal systems like this can be really active. So as early as Saturday afternoon, we're going to see showers and thunderstorms in western Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, and Montana. 
Saturday afternoon and evening, a few of these thunderstorms could get all the way into central Wyoming. Sunday into Monday, though, we're going to see a better chance of showers and thunderstorms along and east of the divide and onto the plains as the system moves through. Might even have some severe weather. Since there really isn't any really cold air, it's going to be a rain event on the plains. And here you can see the potential. Now, this is just the potential. It doesn't show you exactly what will fall, but it's a good indication we see the blue and yellow here that parts of eastern Colorado, eastern Wyoming, western South Dakota, western Nebraska are going to see some showers and thunderstorms, a fair amount of activity in that area there as we get into the Sunday, Monday time frame. But we could see thunderstorms in some areas, especially these western areas, as early as Saturday afternoon. Now let's talk about May a little bit. What I've done here is I've picked a few locations across Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and South Dakota, and these are what the average amounts of moisture are in the month of May. Now, why is this important? Well, almost, not all, but almost every one of these locations I have listed here has May, on average, the wettest month of the year. May is a really critical month. If you were to take a look at, at Cheyenne, Cheyenne averages between 15 to 16 inches of water a year for the 12 month period. So two inches of rain in the month of May is a good chunk of the average annual precipitation. Grand Junction averages about nine inches of rain a year. That's a 10% of their moisture for the whole year. And you can look, a lot of areas here you see twos, like Lander and Sheridan and Gillette and Denver and Rapid City and Dodge City and Billings. You can see there's a lot of consistency here in the numbers. Of course, you get on the western slope, west of the divide, you're going to be drier as you would expect. But what will happen is, is if you don't have a wet May, you have low soil moisture going into June and July, and that basically holds back thunderstorm activity a little bit. As you get into the North American monsoon season, if you have poor soil moisture, it's hard to recharge the lower layers of the atmosphere to make the summertime thunderstorms more productive. And this was one big problem we had last year is that La Nina kicked into gear in May and June and July last year and made May, June and July much drier than average in the Intermountain West. So what we have to do is we've got to hit these averages for May for us to continue to chip away at the drought. We have seen some help as we just saw with the rain in southeastern Wyoming and northeastern Colorado and we had some moisture earlier in the week up in far northern Wyoming and southern Montana. There are islands of wetness where it's gotten more wet, but they're just islands. In between the islands, it's still a sea of dryness in many areas. So you expect May to be wet. So when we show you these maps and show you chances of rain and thunderstorms, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. So what we've got to have is these showers and thunderstorms be more productive, covering larger areas, just not pockets. But at least it's a start here, a little bit more encouraging with what happened in March and April. With La Nina weaker, that's certainly going to help, but it's not gone yet. So take a look at these numbers. If you're not in one of these locations, you're likely you're close to one of these, and that's about what your average precipitation is for the month of May. If we end up May drier than normal, that does not bode well for June. But if we can get a wet May, that helps June and July, and that will make this summer not as bad as last summer. So we'll take a look, and we'll track May's precipitation as we go along. Taking out a long-range outlook, speaking of precipitation, this is the weekend of May 8th and 9th. There is a hint of a low coming into the western United States by next weekend. We'll see what happens. We have to put a question mark on this. This is 10 days away, but it does look like we have this precipitation chance later this weekend and into Monday, and then it looks like a big warm up again Tuesday through Friday. And then next weekend is our next chance. If we're going to get significant moisture, that's when the next chance will be. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll see you on Thursday.